they're up the line. They're over. Have they got it down? Yes, they have. 36 points to nil as captain Sarah Hunter comes up with the ball. I just remember having the best time running around, trying something like I'd never done. It's still really vivid for me. I think I went home and was like, oh, I played rugby today for the first time and loved it. So I think for a young girl to go home to tell their parents, oh, I played rugby and I enjoyed it, I think they were a bit taken back, but I absolutely loved it. They selected like a couple of people from each school to go um, to join this like northeast team and go down to to Wembley and play before a Great Britain Australia game. And I was like, this is mental. I've played rugby for eight weeks and I'm now like going to London without my mum and dad, like on this exciting trip to go and play at Wembley of all places. Like you see it on TV and now like I was running out and playing and running around with this sport that I never knew existed and now I'm having the best time of my life. It was a, a really special experience, especially at the start of, I guess, I didn't know then, but my journey. Katie and I first started playing rugby through Rugby League. We tried to start up a, a Rugby League girls only team and I think Katie had played from a young age rugby union and I, I don't know how but there was like a development officer that kind of brought people together and then that's how I met Katie and we played in this, this sort of like northeast rugby league girls team. Someone was trying to set up union um, and then we both went to there and she obviously played fly half and I played inside centre so it was uh, yeah it was a combination for a few years. Controlled at the base there by the captain Sarah Hunter just creeping their way towards the Irish line and you can see here Hunter trying to take it all the way up to the try line and it is the captain who gets the score. I didn't really know the pathway I played rugby because I loved it. I didn't even know there was an England women's team to play for. I was uh, at uni doing the first part of my finals exams, like I was in my final year, and I was sat in a biomechanics uh, lab at Loughborough. And then I got a call from Jeff Richards, who was the coach at the time. I was thinking, why is he, why is he ringing me? And he's like, oh, hi, Sarah. Like, we've selected you to be involved in the Scotland game, Six Nations game, um, on the bench. And I was like, I don't think I said anything. I was like, oh, oh great, like, amazing, thank you. Like, it was so little words about anything. I just remember it and thinking, this is like unbelievable. Like, it's a dream come true. Like, I wanted to be an England player. And now, like, this was the reality. I got my first cap with Katie. So that was really special, obviously having played uh, way back as a 13, 14 year olds to then be running out for England together and sharing that moment with her was, was really special and I think I was more nervous about having to do um, the song on the bus on the way home than the actual game and I didn't get very long but it didn't matter to me like it, it felt like the most special probably five six minutes in the world and I was like no one can now take this away from me I'm now a, an England player. The World Cup final. Now it's all about the team that keeps its cool, that plays its best, that trusts itself. That's the team that wins. I remember waking up on um, the final of the World Cup and just being so relaxed and at ease with everything. And it was like everyone knows what they're doing. We know the game plan. We know what we have to do. And when Scars went through on that line. The way everyone in her, I think there was a realisation at that moment that that was it. That was it. That was the moment we'd won the World Cup. So yeah, when the whistle went, it was just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. The victory did, and there it is. England are world champions. We were going out to play Ireland and Nicky Ponsford grabbed me and sat me down and said, I need to talk to you. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what have I done? And she's like, oh, did you get an email? I was like, oh, no, I haven't got an email. She's like, oh, well, you've been nominated for World Play of the Year. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I don't feel like I've played any better than anyone like in my team, never mind anyone in the world. So that was pretty surreal. Like, didn't really think anything of it. Went out to Ireland. We'd just done a team training session and then I took me into this little room, obviously looking a mess, and I was like, oh, 
just to let you know that you won uh, World Player of the Year. And I was like, oh my God, like, I didn't know what to say. I was absolutely speechless. Like, I'm so proud of it, but it, for me, my personality doesn't sit that comfortably because I'm like, oh, well, all my other teammates have done really well and what they do allows me to play how I do and how I contribute to the team. And I think rugby is the ultimate team sport. To, to, so to get singled out, like, still makes me feel like a little bit awkward about it. Hunter, she's almost there. She picks it up and flops over. And that was far too easy. For me now, and probably as I'm sort of edging towards the end of my career, um, I think a bit of that pressure's gone. Like, I love playing rugby, I love playing for England, and having it almost taken away from you, I think, allows you to reflect on that and almost look back on the journey that you've had. And I've had an absolutely incredible time. And since coming back, I think I feel a little bit more relaxed about things. And, you know, if I play another 10 times for England, brilliant. If someone wants to say that that's it, I've had an inc incredible ride and journey along the way. I feel, even though playing for England X amount of times, I still feel like I'm a player that can get better and can improve and can help the team more and that's what excites me and that's what keeps me driven and that's what keeps my passion alive and um, and yeah hopefully it'll it'll end in New Zealand in a in a successful way um, um, but only time will tell.